Crossing over in freestyle is one of the biggest mistakes that swimmers make. Now before I share with you how to fix this mistake and a few others that are really common in both beginner and advanced swimmers, I wanna to talk to you guys about why this matters and why it's so important that you watch this video until the very end because I'm gonna share some golden nuggets with you. So number one, it allows you to swim faster. So if you can correct some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about in this video that almost every swimmer can fail victim to at some point in their swimming journey, you're gonna swim faster. Not only that, you're gonna become more efficient, which means that you can swim longer and it's gonna help you swim faster. Number three, you can prevent injury. Now, I gotta be careful with the word prevent because I can't necessarily prevent an injury, but I can reduce the likelihood and reduce the chances of which you hurt yourself because some of the things that we're gonna talk about are very common for a lot of swimmers that can develop swimmer shoulder and a whole bunch of other injuries, and we wanna reduce the likelihood that that happens. And then finally, it's more fun. When you incorporate some of the drills that we're gonna talk about, because I'm gonna break down a few different things that swimmers are doing wrong and a few different ways that you can fix that. And by doing so, you're working on drills, you're working on developing your skills, and that's just gonna make swimming that much more fun. And if you're not having fun, then what are you doing? So if you're having fun, make sure you subscribe, like, and let me know down below in the comments what questions you guys have on what we're about to talk to. So let's go into it. Crossing over, I mentioned it in the intro, that means you can cross your hands over the midline of your body. So if you take a laser beam and you just slice your body in half, if you enter the water crossing that line, imagine it's a laser, boom, you just chopped off your fingers. Can't do that. There's there's also a crossover that happens below the water. So above the water, it's where your hand enters the water. We don't wanna cross that midline. We wanna enter just in front of and outside of the shoulder, which means if you're entering in front of your head, too narrow, laser beam chops off your fingers. Now underneath the water, this is also another common mistake that swimmers make. So let's say you enter the water correctly in front of that shoulder and you reach your fingertips forward, you get a great pull, but then you take a breath to your side and that arm just crosses that midline underneath the water. So you gotta remember that laser beam is two dimensional, both vertical, horizontal, whatever way you wanna slice it, pun intended, and you can't cross it underneath the water. A lot of swimmers do this mistake when they breathe. So there's a crossover that happens as you're breathing and you don't even notice it. Now, if you consciously focus on this, you might be able to pick it up. This also can develop into your stroke so that it becomes part of your rhythm and it actually feels really awkward when you fix this, but it's something you do have to fix. Now, there's a few different ways that you can focus on this. One way to fix, especially the overwater crossover, is by doing shoulder width catch-up drill. Now, this is a drill where basically you're going to have your hand take the freestyle stroke, but you're gonna pause with your arm directly directly in front of your shoulder in that line and you're gonna wait until your other hand touches the water on the opposite side. So remember, freestyle and backstroke are long axis strokes, so you should have a lot of symmetry. Well, not a lot, but you should have perfect symmetry or near perfect symmetry from what's happening on your right side as well as your left side. And that's a great drill when you're doing this catch up, but you don't wanna have your hands smack each other. This is a big mistake you don't wanna do. When you're doing catch up drill, you wanna make sure you're putting your hands right in front of the shoulder, and then you pause, and you don't take that next stroke until your opposite opposite hand reaches the equivalent position on the other side. Hopefully that made sense. We'll show some B-roll so that you guys can catch that. Now, the second mistake here on the whiteboard is entering too narrow. So this is where you literally enter in front of your head. So you can enter, there's a few different ways this could be dissected, but maybe you're entering the water like right in front of your head as if your arms are, you know, 10 centimeters long, or you're entering crossing over and too narrow. So there's a few different ways that this can, this can be bad for you. And what this is going to do if you enter the water in front of your head, putting a lot of strength stress on your shoulders. Actually, the crossover and all of these can put a lot of stress on your shoulders. So one way that you can focus on fixing this is a drill that I really like called bow and arrow. This is really gonna focus on balance and really having the proper position before your hand actually enters the water. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a freestyle stroke, you're gonna pause with your arm above the water, and you're gonna make like kind of like a bow and an arrow. Your hand is at 45 degrees to the surface of the water. Your fingertips are pointing as if they're going to enter the 
the water, but they're not, and you're gonna do six kicks in that position. Once you nail down the six kicks, you're gonna take a stroke and you're gonna repeat on the opposite side. So that bow and arrow is really working on a lot of different things, but it really helps you focus on positioning your hand and balancing on your side. So working on a lot of different things, one of my favorite drills. Now the third, dr the third uh, mistake is entering with your thumb. Remember, when you swim freestyle, unlike some of the other strokes, actually all the other strokes, you enter with your middle finger and your ring finger first. If you enter the water with your thumb first, which is a really common mistake for all levels of swimming, you're not going to position your hand to catch the most water. Also, if you enter with your thumb, what happens when you rotate it? It means you're pushing water and you're gonna end up kind of wiggling and swimming like the worm. Remember, the fastest path from A to B is a straight line. So if you enter the water with your thumb and then you have to push the water to the side in order to reach the good catch, you're basically just pushing yourself right and left on every single stroke and that's gonna make you slower and you're swimming a longer distance to get to the other end of the pool. So let's fix that and we can fix that by doing a modified fist drill. So if you're not familiar, fist drill is where you swim with your hand in a fist. There's a lot of different versions of the fist drill. You can do it with two fingers, you can do it with three fingers, you can do A-OK. -okay. It doesn't really matter so much as that your mind is engaged in what you're doing. And when you start to pay attention to what your hands and fingers are doing when they enter the water, that's the key. Now it's really important that you not only focus on this during a drill, but you focus when you're fatigued. And that's, when, that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit later when we apply this to a workout that I wrote for you guys where we break it down set by set, but we're not there yet. So just remember, you don't wanna enter the water with your thumb because it's not gonna set up the optimal catch. Instead, we wanna enter the water with our ring finger and our middle finger, and that'll set us up for the best catch possible. Now, this next mistake is bending at the wrist. You don't wanna swim with like a T-Rex style stroke. T-Rex is awesome, but T-Rex is extinct, and we don't want you to be extinct. So make sure you swim with a solid hand paddle. The paddle starts with your fingertips, the top of your fingertips, right above your fingernail, and it goes down through your wrist, all the way down your forearm and into your elbow. If you break that, you're T-Rex and you're gonna become extinct and we don't want that. So rather than becoming extinct, swim with a solid paddle all the way down to your elbow and that's gonna set you up for the optimal catch. You bend at the elbow and that creates our early vertical forearm. A lot of times swimmers break the wrist and they think they're doing an early vertical forearm. No, that's called T-Rex or your salt bay. <laughs> Here we go, bending the wrist, we don't want that. So how do we fix this? We grab a paddle and we instead focus on keeping the wrist straight and pulling and feeling the power of the pull right where our wrist is. And you can't do this if you swim like this, right? Salt Bay can't hold a paddle and do the salt thing at the same time. Instead, really focus on grabbing the top of the paddle and make sure you're really catching the water with an early vertical forearm and this drill really reinforces that. There's a lot of other drills that we can apply to not only fix these mistakes, but a lot of other things in swimming, but we can only condense these four. Now what I wanna do is I actually wanna break this down into a workout and I think this is probably the most important part of the video because at this stage, we already know what you should do, what you shouldn't do, now we have to actually apply it to swimming. And this is why it's so important. So I have this beautiful workout here. It's available in the My Swim Pro app. And just keep in mind, as I go through this workout and the drills and the structure, it's really important to listen to the strategy. And also keep in mind that this workout in the My Swim Pro app, the intervals are personalized to me. So when you see one 300 freestyle on the five minute, 650s kick, these are based on your best times. The app has an algorithm that automatically factors in how fast you are, your goals, your skill level. It's all beautiful. It's like magic and that's happening right there in the app. So after the 650s kick, we're gonna go 200 IM. That concludes our warm up. Then we're gonna get into the fun stuff. We're gonna go four rounds of this set group that has two sets. We're gonna go 425's drill on the 30. And on each of the four rounds, we're gonna do the four drills that we talked about. So the way that works, on round number one, you're gonna do the first drill. So we're gonna go 425's, where we're gonna do catch up at the shoulder width. Then we're gonna go a 100 freestyle with perfect freestyle technique. After that, 
round one, we're gonna go round number two, where we're going to incorporate the next drill, which is bow and arrow. So we're gonna go 425s, bow and arrow, then we're gonna go 100 perfect. And we're gonna go through the next two rounds doing the next two drills. Now the main set is two rounds through, we're gonna go one 400 freestyle pull. You can use paddles, a buoy, really focus on that early vertical forearm and perfect hand entry. Then we're gonna go 450s freestyle on the minute. These are gonna be a best average effort level and they're gonna be descent. Now if you notice here on the workout, you can actually see what that looks like where it's informing you the different effort levels that are color coded, as well as any additional instruction and equipment. So on the last set, we saw the 400 was pull with paddles, and then you can also see on the 450s, we are descending those, which means we're getting faster on each one all in the backdrop of improving our freestyle technique. Because if you don't have freestyle technique, if you're not thinking about what you're doing, well, none of this really matters. You may as well just sit on your couch and visualize yourself swimming. No, don't do that. Go to the pool, do the workout, and then conclude the workout with four 100s freestyle with an absolutely perfect technique. This is so critical to really finish the workout the way you want to start the next workout. You want to start the workout feeling great, feeling strong. That's how you have to finish the workout as well. Doesn't mean you go fast, just means means you're consciously aware of what you're doing and you're being mindful while you actually complete the workout. Now this workout is too long, it is 3200 meters, it should take about one hour to complete with these intervals. Again, if your intervals are a little bit slower than that, it's probably going to take you a little bit longer and you can drag the slider across the workout, it's absolute magic and that can make the workout longer or shorter to your choosing. If you have an Apple Watch or a Garmin, you can take this workout to the pool, sync it, it'll guide you through the workout set by set, haptic feedback, it's absolute wizardry. And then if you don't like that, you can just export it to PDF. Now, I know if you're watching, you're like, well, that's cool, but I have a coach. I want to just log my own workouts. You can do that too. You can even write your own workouts and use my swim pro app as a swim log. So there's a lot of different functionality. It is true wizardry. So let me know what questions you guys have down below in the comments. And if you guys are not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And I know you're going to love our next video, how to swim faster in just 90 seconds. So if you made it to the end of this video, you definitely have to watch that one. Happy swimming. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.